Hey guys! So today I have a tutorial, a little fabulous tutorial, well I think it's fabulous, on these great little sanitizer holders. So they hold the Bath and Body ones that are so popular that are the one ounce and they just slide in like that and you can do it so that you can open it at the bottom. And the nice thing about that is it's easy to slide it up. Or really, if you would prefer that these stand upright, then just don't do the bottom. And there you go. So we have that. And the same holder can also fit a Purell bottle. That is also the one ounce size. And it goes in. Now there's two options for holes. For the Purell one, you can use either this round hole, it fits in, or the Purell one also will fit in the little square hole. See? It's got little shoulders and so that also works in there. And another thing that there is the option of is there are different handles. So you can either do what I call a top handle, which would be these little guys at the top here, or you can do what I'm calling a back tab. And it's just a little tab piece that goes through for the back. All right, so we have the two options for that. And there is also another option. So some of you have smaller machines, I know, and you only have up to a five by seven hoop. Now I know they're smaller than that, but we're gonna work with a five by seven. So this version that is one piece goes in the six by 10. But today's tutorial is going to be on the little guys that have this little piece. So I'll show you the difference. No piece on the back and this flap. So it's the same flap, but this piece is added separately so that you'll have a flap for it and so that it will fit into the five by seven hoop. So I hope you will join me and make some of these really great little sanitizer holders. This is the one that we're going to be doing in today's tutorial for this video. And I also will have another video that we're going to be doing, wait, 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 this one. It is the six by 10. So it will be the one piece. So it has its own video. Something I forgot to mention too, before we get started, that because of where these are located, I need to make sure when you buy the file, you understand that these will likely not be able to be put on with a hand press. You need to use old school hammer, anvil, and the little post with the dome cap on it because they just won't fit. So these ones will fit in the punch. And if you have a punch for this button, you can do that. But I'm pretty sure that these will not fit in your punch. You gotta go old school. All right, so to get started on this project, we need a few simple things. You need some sort of a snap uh, cap. A lot of people like cam snaps. I like these little metal button snaps. So you need that. And some sort of a rivet. So I'm using just this little kit I got off Amazon and it has a few different sizes in it, but I'm using the double cap one that is around a six to eight millimeter diameter cap. And the post, I'd say probably around the same, but an eight millimeter. There we go. And you'll need some sort of a swivel clasp or key ring or something like that. And then you will definitely, to install the rivets, need something that you can install them with so that you cannot use a press because the press cannot get down in the bottom. So you need this tool that comes with rivets or you buy a 
separately. It has a little concave end on it. So you hold that to hammer. So you need a one of these, a hammer, and a spot to do that. That's very important with this project. And then you are going to need some sort of a scissor to cut out the little center hole. Or if you do have punches, especially for the circle one, you can use that. But for the little square one, I just use my little blunt end embroidery scissors or applique scissors. I found those work the best. And then for the uh, holder itself, all you need is one piece of vinyl for the front. And then you need some sort of a lining material. I like to use either a felt or two layers of the Ollie Fun Fabric. And then the tearaway stabilizer. So to get started, we have to, as usual, go run the placement stitch. All right, the placement stitch was done. And the next thing is just adding the fabric. This is like the simplest design, guys. So I like to turn it over and take the felt piece or lining piece, whatever you have chosen. And that is just going to go on the back. And you just tape it in place or spray adhesive or both. So there we have that. And then the next thing to do is to take this piece for the front, lay it on, and also tape that one into place. And then we take it back to the machine and we run the final stitches that are going to be for this. So if you wanted to do that in a separate piece or a separate color, you could. And then it will do the placement stitches for the top handle part, that's the one I'm doing. And then after that, we are going to run the final bean stitching for this, and then all the placement holes. All right, you guys, the embroidery part is done. And see how super quick that is. See, this is the front, this is the back. And I do recommend when you do projects like this that you're gonna see the inside, match the bobbin thread if you want to. I like doing it just so, because I can see it. All right, so the next thing that we have to do is we have to cut this out around the outside of the holder and I'll get right to that. And there we have it. The piece is all cut out. So at this point, I am going to take it over to my cutting machine so that I can work on the, or not my cutting machine. I'm gonna take it to my cutting table so that I can do the rest. However, if you don't have an, a punch like I do for the circle portion, then I recommend some sort of slightly curved uh, scissor. It'll help you get a nicer cut on that. All right, so I'm just going to head over to the cutting table. All right, moving on to the rivets and snaps. So here is the completed piece. Now, 
I have a hole punch that came in just a kit like this. Just a basic punch all kind of kit. The only thing is, it doesn't have a hammer piece on it on the top or it doesn't have any place for you to screw into. So they're typically used in a, in a flat punch, but I can still use it with a piece of wood. So first thing is to either cut this out or I'm going to use a punch for this. Go. So and there we have that, and it it makes a pretty decent hole. All right. So as we keep moving on, for the tab in the back, that's what I'm going to add next. I like to use a nine millimeter double cap rivet. So the hole here is for the back tab, like this one, or if you're doing the other one with the handle piece, the handle piece would go across the top like this, and that has marks there. So I punched a hole there. And then, just so you can see the difference. So this is my nine millimeter, and this is my smaller one that I'm gonna use for the sides, all right? So just put that in, put that over, close it up. that in there and you need to have a good size post if you're going to go through all this material there we go and for this one you actually can use a press if you have it so that is that done all right and then the next thing I suggest is to install the little snap portion. All right, so when you're adding these type of snaps with the little button, what makes all the difference is getting yourself a good quality snap. <laughs> because the post will turn over a lot nicer. All right, so it's a little hard to see inside there, but you can see the button is on really well and the piece inside folded over nicely. So I have some other snaps I have from Amazon so I have a set here, and these are so cheap <laughs> that when I use them, these little post bits that are hanging up, well, instead of folding over, they kind of just crush and the snaps come out. So, more or less, if you're gonna get some button snaps, get a good brand. And give it a little test. There we have it. See, they go together nice. All right, now we have the sides, which is the harder portion. So, I am going to punch those. All right, so you'll probably notice that I used a different hole for this one than I am using for these ones. That is because you want your rivets to be snug in the hole or anything that you put in, snaps or whatever, you want them to be nice and snug in the hole and not fall out. 
and that will give you a much better stabilized pressure and easier to push and it will hold way better. So the next thing that we have to do is we have to, oh look at that, I missed one. There we have it. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we have to fold it up and then you have to figure out which flap you want sticking out. So you could have it like this, but kind of kind of looks a little messy. I tried it that way. So I like the what will be the front flap. I like that on the outside. So you just fold it over and you put your rivet in the bottom of that hole and the bottom of that hole. And you put your little cap on. Okay, so that's holding in place. And then do the same for the top. All right, so now that is going to be held in place a little better for you and it will hold in place while hammering. So if you have a punch, you can use a punch on the top, that will likely work. But when you're getting to the bottom portion, especially in the second one, it's very difficult with a punch. So what I suggest is just going back to the basics and using the concave tool, and we're just gonna move over. And I mean, here's the basics. Clamp, piece of metal, some wood, this, All right, and then we just do the same for the other side. All right, so we go back over here and I made a small adjustment to my setup because my piece of wood is too wide to slide in. Here, I'm using the wood for another project. So I don't want to cut that down. However, I can still use my metal piece. So I just pulled it out a bit and I put a little piece of cutaway stabilizer on there. And then off to the races again. There we go. So it's a little hard for you see on the inside. You can feel when they're smooshed together. Um, but I can't really show you that. Anyhow, now with that type of a setup, the inside of your rivet does get smooshed flat as opposed to saying a little concave, but it's on the side. So I wasn't sure that it really matters. However, some people have tools that you can actually get in there and they still will help give you the little domed look. All right, so there we have a little sanitizer holder. All right, get the other ones. Let's give this a test. Oh, the square one is, if you're going to use the that bottle, you need the square. But let's take this one out, put it in, and voila. There we go. So I hope you guys like this product, and we'll give it a shot. Just if you're going to use the snaps and the rivets, make sure that you invest in a good quality so that you're not frustrated when trying to use them. The Amazon ones, I would not say, are the best quality. However, if you order from some type of a leather working store, they almost always have the really good quality that will punch in and smash down really well. All right, so if you haven't yet, subscribe 
please. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I hope you give these a shot.